Here we are on the server tab. So the first thing we have are system paths. These are simply paths to some of the commands on the server that we may want to implement with our Moodle site. First of all, um, du, which is the which will speed up directory listings when you're looking for files. Um, if you want the spell check functionality within Moodle, then you can usually just copy the uh, path that's there as long as a spell is installed. Um, we also have a similar option for dot, which um, really is not is not something that most people will need. It's just uh, useful for developers. Two of the other things that may be important though, first of all, ghost script. That is gonna be required if you want teachers to be able to annotate on top of PDFs that students have uploaded as assignments. And we also have the you know, conv, which is important if you want to use OpenOffice and some of the functionality in there to um, also annotate PDFs. We have a support contact. So this is the support name for your site. You might want to have something a little more friendly than that, such as a help desk, and then obviously a, a help desk support email that's appropriate for your organization. You can also, if you want, if you have a just a basic HTML page somewhere, uh, possibly within your Moodle site or, or even elsewhere, then you can link to that page as your support page, perhaps carrying uh, additional instructions or information for people who are creating their, their own accounts, for example, and might get a little stuck. So you can direct them to a useful page. Session handling, you can almost certainly leave this, most of this at, at the defaults. Um, it is possible to use the database for session information, but it's uh, important that you understand that will log everyone out if you change that during uh, your site running live. One thing you may want to change for security reasons is the is the default timeout. So if people are logged in but not doing anything, um, by default Moodle will log them out after two hours. You may want to bring that down to something a little more um, uh, sensible really, maybe an hour. Um, I certainly wouldn't advise five minutes or 15 minutes. That's um, I think quite often people are using uh, Moodle and e-learning while they're multitasking with something else. So that, that would definitely probably be too short, but I, I think we tend to bring that down to about an hour. Moodle, of course, uses a cookie and the cookie prefix is in here. Um, it's totally okay to, to leave that as it is, but you may you may want to alter that to your own site name just for, um, for, for the usability of, of people browsing your site, then at least they'll understand where that cookie is coming from if it's got a sensible name. The other settings you'll probably leave as defaults. We do have statistics available in Moodle and this page controls how, how those statistics are actually processed. So the first time it runs, how far do you want your statistics gathering to go. If you enable statistics during the middle of the day and ask the system to go back for six months, then that is going to cause probably uh, a serious workload on your server. So it's something that you might want to avoid. But um, if you keep this fairly low and then perhaps put a limit on the amount of time it will actually take. So maybe say, let's let's just do 30 minutes, let's just do one week maximum, just to make sure that we don't um, go far, go uh, crazy with collecting those statistics. Also the number of days collected each time we're processing those, so, so during the catch up mode. Once the statistics are up to date, then obviously only one day is processed at a time, so that's absolutely fine. There is a user threshold as well, so that will just enable you to say, well, if there are courses with just the teacher in at the moment, then maybe we don't need to gather statistics on those right now. HTTP settings, again, unless you know what you're doing and you have good reasons for changing things here, you would probably leave these exactly as they are. 
uh, and importantly if you are in an organization and you have proxy server and you need to specify the proxy server settings to, to get through so that people can actually access your site then this is where you would enter all those proxy settings maintenance mode very useful when you're running an upgrade um, always nice to put a friendly message in here maybe giving some indication of how long the site is going to be in maintenance mode if it's an hour or a day you know people perhaps need to know that and you just simply enable that by clicking on enable once you've done that you will see an indication that the site is in maintenance mode and obviously when people try and log in they'll be told that the site is in maintenance mode and can't go any further and at this point only administrators can log in even teachers cannot log in during maintenance mode and that's because quite often the upgrade process if you were installing a new block or, or module then you wouldn't want people using that site live while those sort well that level of updating is going on obviously once your site is updated whatever you you're doing is completed remember to switch that back off we do have cleanup options so cleanup is around is concerned with how we handle user accounts that aren't completely set up for example so we can delete non fully set up users after a few days default seven i've brought that down a little bit we can delete incomplete users after a certain time as well perhaps alter that you can disable the grade history which will just mean that all the history of the way grades have been changed will will not be kept of course you, you always have the current grade you know the final grade if you like um, there is an advantage of disabling this which is that it will possibly speed up your site a little and it will also conserve quite a bit of space um, grade history tables do take up quite a lot of space if you've enabled those um, you can also decide how long that grade history is kept for so you know I guess usually a year is probably enough um, you do have different settings so you can choose what you think is appropriate and we can also clean up temporary data older than a set number of days and that includes any files that have been deleted so in Moodle now you know you you can add files directly to a course page or a resource if you delete those and they're no longer needed then Moodle can actually automatically remove those after a couple of days the environment this is a very useful check for administrators because it basically shows very quickly whether you have all the correct extensions and so on installed and enabled in PHP there is also a drop down which will enable you to check against future versions once those specifications are known so that's helpful if you're managing your own updates PHP info this basically provides us with an overview of the current PHP version that Moodle is using and that can be useful if you want to for example just double check quickly the file upload size that's actually set in PHP or um, which modules are installed and how they're configured uh, clearly you do need to know a little bit about PHP to use this kind of information but it is there and you may find you know if you've logged a, an error on the Moodle forums or a, a bug report that you may be asked to look at your PHP info and report back on that and this is where you could do that hubs we can use hubs and we can register our Moodle site with different hubs. Hubs allow publishing of courses from one site to another. Update notifications. This is really just helping us stay on top of our Moodle site. So whether we want to check automatically for updates, and I think that definitely needs to be a yes. Uh, update notifications are sent to all site admins which versions we're looking for if you're running a test server or a development server you may want to be looking at beta versions or release candidates but for a production site you're definitely only looking for stable versions you can look for actual new builds so there are new builds of a version every so often perhaps with small bug fixes in and then there are the actual Moodle release versions if you have for example a, a problem and you're waiting for a a small change to the code 
to uh, alleviate that problem then it may be that you want to be notified about new builds but generally you'll want to know about new versions file types this is where Moodle recognizes the file types that are available and what they are so for example if you put an AAC audio file which is a kind of Apple lossless audio format then Moodle will know what that is and it will be able to put a suitable icon in there you are able to change these and edit them but uh, for 99% of cases it's just useful to be able to see that you know your your file type is recognized schedule tasks as we know as you should know it's very important that the cron is running on your server so cron is the system on linux and uh, for windows it's probably you probably use schedule tasks the cron job is running all the time and triggering various different tasks so for example triggering the backup files usually overnight sending out forum posts uh, perhaps notifications around assignments and in here we can see all the scheduled tasks and when they are scheduled to run so as an example we have automated backups that's there in the cron job we can see the date and the time it's next scheduled to run and here it's just telling us that it's running every 50 minutes so that's just it, although it will only actually trigger the backups overnight because that's the time you set them for so uh, another example we may have a site where we're using badges so if we want to award badges then every five minutes the that cron job as it runs will trigger the award badges task and if any badges are due it will then award them so this is um, a fairly straightforward. It can feel a bit complex if you're not used to crons and schedule tasks and so on. We then have the email configuration, the outgoing mail, which is your forum posts and assignment notifications and so on and so forth. Clearly, we just need to link that up with a mail server. So we have the mail server host the security types, a username and a password. That will be kind of from your uh, IT department. They'll be able to tell you all those details. And we can also have a no reply configured here. It, I think it's really good to obviously have your site name in there as the no reply address. And then we also have a few little other options around the way email is sent out for example whether we allow attachments usually these things will be the defaults will be will be pretty good um, this is one of the newer settings which allows us to show where a, a bit more detail about where that email is coming from and that can potentially help with um, spamming systems and uh, and people blocking a no reply address um, so generally these days you know it's a good new feature we'd leave that on we also have the incoming mail configuration so if you allow users to respond to forum posts for example that have come through into their email whether you allow them to reply directly from there um, obviously we have a switch to say whether we want yes or no the default is no and that's the the, the traditional behavior of Moodle but if you want to enable incoming you can do that you then have to set up a specific mailbox um, there's some good instructions here but basically you'd have a mailbox name and an email domain and these would be unique you know it's like a, a new mail user someone not a real person but uh, an account that's used for this kind of transport and then again the settings for that incoming mail server, the server name, the type of security being used, and the username and password. Finally here we have the message handlers, and these are required to, so you need to enable them first of all, you need to enable whether you want these, these handlers active. So the most common one that we would probably 
use is to allow people to reply to forum posts. So we would enable that. Um, the invalid one is a kind of default and has to be on. And then we have an option whether we want to enable people to email files to their private files area. Um, you may or may not even be using the user's private files area. Uh, if you are and you want people to be able to send a file to their own private user area via email, then you just enable this one. Mm -hmm.